Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone who are locked in right now. Thank you for those who are watching in YouTube or Facebook. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and all those that are present today, right now in this classroom. Oh God, I pray, oh Father, anoint my lips, oh Father. Lord, I pray for each and every one of them, their hearts will be open. The years will be attentive, O oh God. Father, we believe in the name of Jesus Christ, all words, O oh Father, that will be taught, O oh God, will come from on high, O oh Father. Anoint my thoughts, anoint my lips, O oh Father, so that every word, O oh Father, will accomplish its purpose. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today's topic is going to be worth imitating. What is worth imitating? Being imitable, uh, being uh, imitable. You know, our walk with God, it must reflect us as being worth imitating. Otherwise, you know, our walk with God is just like, you know, people look at us, why should they imitate our, our character, our our ways, our mannerism, the things that are, we, we are doing as being Christians. You know, I read somewhere some time ago, it says here, yeah, being Christian, it's been uh, not of the natural self. When I say not of the natural self, it means <coughs> ourself, it's, uh, we are born again. We are born again in Christ. Uh, uh, our walk is with Christ. Amen. You know, in the New Testament, uh, uh, imitating a good character was actually very relevant. People uh, imitate characters. Uh, you can read that people imitate characters in the New Testament because uh, the apostles and the uh, ch children of God, the men of God, they walk uh, in a, such a way. It is uh, something that is beyond our comprehension, something that is uh, beyond our, our mind. Uh, comprehension as well, even though they go through uh, certain form of tests, challenges and suffering, and yet they rejoice. We know that in in Book of Acts, you know, we know that if, when Paul and Silas, they were in prison, and yet they were worshipping and praising God, and we know that the uh, the locked doors were, were set open, the doors uh, were open and the, the captives were set free, their chains were broken. And but the thing is, uh, in today's uh, context, in today's context, uh, imitating someone that's in the church sometimes is not uh, it's not a very popular topic. I would say you know, people come to the church. Uh, um, People come to church, they worship though, and sometimes people come to church and listen to the word though, but uh, their faith can be strong today, but tomorrow their faith changes. Their faith can be strong again the following day, but uh, along the way, their faith wavers again. So uh, imitating someone with uh, great faith, sometimes it's, 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 it's going to be very challenging. But those days in our, our olden days, uh, my father's time, my, my mother's time, or your father's time, or your mother's time. Of course, in different, different areas, in different, different regions and different countries. Um, we tend to uh, imitate, you know, what my father wants me to do, or what my mom wants me to do. And, you know, uh, these are the things you should do. These are the characters you should follow. These are the examples you should follow. But of course, uh, in our present context as well, Usually, I would say that if, you, if a household, the, the father or the mother or the brothers or the sisters, they are lawyers, generally uh, the other brothers and siblings, they will also uh, pursue a course that's a, you know, a law degree. And some of them who are doctors, they will pursue likewise. So uh, it's, it's something that is uh, imitable or imitable. They will imitate certain things that needs to be done. but. Uh, but in our biblical concept of uh, imitation here, as uh, disciples of Jesus, uh, we want to imitate 
Jesus Christ. We want to imitate Jesus Christ. And uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's so important that, you know, we have to imitate um, a godly family. When there's a godly family, we, we will look towards a godly family and see how it's going to be. And uh, uh, that's the way that uh, it should be. So uh, certain things are worth imitating and certain things are not worth imitating, I would say. But we know that, uh, you know, Jesus came about, he gave two, uh, two great uh, commandments, all right, two great commandments. And um, the, Jesus said this in the book of Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39. He said this, uh, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second commandment here is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But we know that uh, in order to fulfill this, it's, it's really, really difficult though. But I would say that uh, only the Holy Spirit will be able to enable us to fulfill these two uh, great commandments, to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. But we know that in our own strength, we... Uh, we find success sometimes out of reach, out of reach. It's so difficult to find success, uh, you know, in our own strength uh, to, fo to fulfill, uh, to follow uh, the great commandment. But uh, we know that uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, uh, it will begin to uh, help us, begin to strengthen us because uh, what's impossible to, to man is always possible to God. So when we look at the fruit of the Spirit, it says, uh, the first fruit of the Spirit here within uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23 says here, love, uh, joy, uh, peace, patience, uh, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, uh, self-control. The first, the first uh, 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 part of it, it says love. But love, uh, we would say here, it's, it's, it's actually a quality. The other eight part of it, the remainder, remaining eight of it, of the fruit, I would say, it's actually a description. It's, a, it's descriptive, I would say. So love is a quality uh, that is uh, within this uh, scripture itself that is the fruit of the Spirit. But uh, love isn't produced by us trying to uh, try harder and try harder, you know, try to love somebody harder, try to, you know, master good, you know, and, and try to, to, to sort of... Uh, sort of trying harder and harder to do something good towards somebody who is considered as irritating, somebody who, who you think you may not like, so you're trying harder and harder. But I would say the, uh, the, the process of uh, looking at it, it's, uh, for example, if you look at the food, all right, that you say that, uh, all right, this food is good, all right, so the quality of it is good. But the descriptive part of it, it is going to be, or it is a spicy, I love spicy food, or it is, you know, a little bit uh, salty and sourish, you know, flavor with this, I like this. So this is going to be descriptive. So love is a, a quality that uh, the Lord has put into our heart. And love is a quality that the Lord that pu who puts into our heart. Not necessarily it means that, you know, through an affection, but actually showing yourself through your actions as well. So I would say that uh, we, uh, uh, to love, we demonstrate kindness, patience, and gentleness, all right? So everything it is God's doing, it's not our doing, huh? it's not our doing at all. Whatever it is, it is, it is God is the one that makes all things possible. So I'm going to explain to you certain things that are worth uh, imitating here is uh, worthy of imitating, all right? What is worthy of imitating? Imitating, we need to imitate carefully as well. Not all things we need to imitate, all right? Imitate the lives of others. Uh, one group imitates another. Imitate the ethics of God ultimately. Yeah? I would place, I would say that I will break it up into three uh, separate sections here. It is a Christ-like character. Uh, this is something that we, we need to look at it. Christ-like behavior. You can have a Christ-like character, but you don't have a Christ-like behavior. You can have a... You have a Christ-like character, Christ-like behavior, but you don't have a Christ-like sacrifice at times. But I would say that um, there is nothing more stressful than a strained relationship. A strained relationship uh, will give you a lot, a lot of love, a lot of stress. If, even when we go through difficult situations, but difficult situations that we run through, it can calm, but 
after some time it will go but uh, the tensions we feel uh, with people are like you know when there is a strained relationship it's like you know a, a cloud that's hovering all the time uh, over our head you know we see it, it hovers over our head we, we you know even we walk even when we are resting it hovers over our head so the, the thing that is considered really really stressful is a strained relationship but uh, we can be free of this uh, kind of emotions if we know how to remedy it so one of the way to to a biblical way to remedy it, that God have enabled us and Jesus have, have given us the principle here it's and the solution here is Jesus told his disciples I'm going to give you a new commandment a new commandment in the book of John chapter 13 verse uh, 34 it says that you love one another as I love you so even you have a strained relationship even though it's stressful but uh, Jesus came with a new commandment here not only say love your God with all your heart all your soul and all your mind uh, with all your strength and uh, love your neighbor but Jesus came with a new commandment so even you have a strained relationship you have uh, challenges you know in a relationship that is really bothering you and you know just making you sort of stressful and, and feel anxiety but God has given us the solution the solution here is to love one another as I love you though you think sometimes you know it sounds simple but it's very difficult to 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 follow it's very difficult sometimes to you know to to just go along the line eh? but uh, whatever it is uh, jesus have explained it to us taught us that you know it is so important because god is love god is love first john chapter 4 verse 16 it tells us god is love eh? note that he doesn't say that he sometimes he's God is sometimes loving, but and sometimes God is not loving. Love is a part of who God is. Amen. Love is a part of who Jesus is. He's, he's loving towards his children. God is loving towards his children, whatever it is. Amen. Hallelujah. And we know that uh, uh, love uh, produces, uh, is, is the, as I've said, is the quality in our fruit. Love love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control love start with love everything starts with love love is a quality within ourselves if we don't have love as a quality within within ourselves there is nothing descriptive that will come for a while you know if there's no love in you how can you have joy if there's you don't even understand what is love all about how can you have peace you can't have peace and you can't have patience you can't have uh, kindness goodness gentleness faithfulness nothing you can't even have self-control so nothing is possible that way you know in the book of uh, i don't think i have that in slide huh? in in the book of uh, first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 9 to 10 it says here but we don't need to write to you about the importance of loving each other for god himself has taught her, taught you to love one another god has taught us it says here indeed you already show your love for all believers throughout macedonia even so dear brothers and sisters we urge you to love them even more when you love somebody uh, you know somebody all right i'm not talking about affectionate love huh? all right affectionate love will come later on all right i'm talking about you know when you love somebody you care for somebody you you you, you help somebody you know you you have compassion over somebody for, for example pastor john Poo, he goes down there you know to this home to pick somebody you know this is actually a reflection of an action of love all right it doesn't mean i have the affection for this man all right but i have a compassion for him so my compassion for him and my love for, for him it reflects into an action that i go and carry him i, I mean I, I go to the home i pick him up you know i drive him to this place and that place where he wants to buy certain things so he needs to, to see a doctor he needs to see a specialist so when we look at god's standard god has a standard god's standard is uh, god still loves us even when we were sinful and rebellious right that's god's standard yeah? he chose to love us even when we were his enemies we do, when we do not know god uh, is we are actually the enemies of god we are in a different kingdom but yet god sent his only begotten son all of you know sent jesus christ so that none of us shall perish and have eternal life eternal life that's god's standard you know but men also have a standard men have a standard that is a carnal standard the early standard so men would like to think that loving other people is optional if i like you i love you it's optional 
I like you, I love you. The other person, I like this person, I don't like. But Jesus, no, Jesus loves everybody, whether you are sinners or non sinners, yes. It doesn't matter. You know, Jesus invited the tax collector, Matthew, you know, have dinner. And, you know, our standard, as a man's standard, we tend to think that loving other people is optional. We choose as and whom we like and whom we do not like. And many times it's also dependent upon their treatment of us. This person treat me well, ah, I, 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 I show my love. This is man's standard. I'm not talking about God's standard. God's standard is different. Huh? This person treat me not bad. Huh? So I tend to like this person more. I tend to show love to this person more. In other words, they must deserve to be loved unless they treat us good. If this person treats us good, I love them. This person don't treat us good, we don't love them. But you know, this is not the way that God wants us to be. Uh, so uh, God's standard and man's standard is different. Uh. In, the, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse uh, 1 to 2, uh, chapter 5 verse 1 to 2, it says, Imitate God, therefore in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Just imitate God. We are his dear children. Live a life filled with love. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. Eh? Live a life filled with love, following the examples of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Amen. So let's look at the Christ like character. Christ like character. Christ like character here, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. It says here, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's Christ like character. Huh? Clothe ourselves with tender hearted mercy. But how are we going to do all this? Huh? Kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. We can't, it's, it's so difficult to do all this because everything that needs to be done in this case here. It begins with love in our heart. It's love that's able to enable us to have a changed heart because love begins with a changed heart. And with a changed heart, with a born again spirit, we must allow the Holy Spirit to work with us and put, allow Him to work in us so that our heart will have a heart, becomes a heart of compassion, our heart becomes a a heart of kindness, that's what it means here. You have a heart, tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Amen. Otherwise, it's so difficult to love people. How to love people when you don't have all this? You look at somebody else, in the, somebody in the coffee shop, maybe because of certain things you dislike. Then you look at somebody who is, you know, blocking you, blocking your, your car, you know, because of your, of your, your rage, you know. You know, you just, you know, you're just not happy about it, you know. So, I look at it that, you know, many things, you know, in, uh, in our life here to, uh, with a Christ-like character, uh, we just have to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. Otherwise, our expression of love uh, just rooted in hypocrisy. You know, we, we, we show love to somebody actually is uh, it's hypocritical because... It is a necessity to show love at a specific time, specific moment, but our hearts are not changed. So we, to have a changed heart, um, we must allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. Christ-like behavior here, all right? The Bible says here, First uh, Corinthians chapter, First uh, Corinthians chapter thirteen. Uh, Corinthians, that the spelling is wrong. Uh, t t h t h uh, I A, eh? all right. First Corinthians chapter thirteen. You read that in uh, uh, First Corinthians chapter thirteen. The entire chapter, you can see that you know love responds with uh, a Christ-like behavior. Cry, uh, a love responds with patience, kindness, you know, and then uh, it doesn't behave with jealousy, proudly, disgracefully and does not demand its own way and rights. You know, at certain time we want to demand our own way and rights. So Christ-like behavior does not demand our own rights. 
our own way, our own rights. It doesn't demand that. Uh, but instead, it considers what, what's good for others. What, what are the things that are good for others? It's not certain things that are good for us. We look at it that what is good for others first. So, but it, these are some of the things that I would say is, is really difficult, you know, sometimes to, 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 to do uh, 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 as, as a person. Sometimes you find it so difficult to do. But as you continuously um, put it into your kind of practice, uh, you know, do something that's good for others, you know, meant for somebody, like, you, know, you know, just put yourself behind. Um, then you will find that you know it's uh, a Christ-like character. It's doing something good for others, like just like love one another, uh, or care for one another, compassion for one another, mercy for one another. When you see somebody who's really really down, will you feel burden or not? Question number one. When you see somebody who it's uh, who's so troubled in their in their mind in their heart, will you be troubled or not? Or you just say, or you just say that. I never mind like don't bother you know none of my business if this person comes and approach you or this person comes to see you will it become your burden or not? if you you look at it it becomes your burden as well then you will begin to feel that you know this is what christ felt Christ, you know christ jesus christ you know when you look at somebody when he, he saw the people who were so you know in you know, the story about Jesus feeding 5,000 people, you know, the, the disciples told the, told the teacher, said, oh, my, we are my, my well sent, tell them to go back and go, you know, make their way home. But uh, Jesus said, no, let them stay on, you know, I'm going to feed them with uh, five loaves of bread and two fish. But how is it going to be possible? The possibility of having things done uh, through a miracle, uh, it is only possible through the hands of Jesus. Our, our behavior is to obey. So the lad who brought the uh, two fish and uh, five loaves, and when uh, the disciples obeyed, it's Jesus who is producing the miracle. Jesus is the one that does the multiplying. It's not the disciples. They pass and then the, the disciples multiply, the disciples multiply, the people receive, they multiply. Nothing to do with all of them. Uh, only Jesus can do the multiplication. Only Jesus can do the miracle. So any miracles that happen in our life uh, that have changes within us. Uh, for example, my, uh, for example, my character, for example, if I have a lot of rage, if, if I change, it's, it's not me, it's the only Jesus who is able to help me. Uh, if I'm able to teach, it's only Jesus that enabled me. If I'm able to, to have Rema word and I begin to, you know, have certain things that I look at it through a different perspective, it's, it's Jesus who helps us. It's nothing to do with us. We are considered nothing. You know, our, our thoughts, our, our wisdom, it's, it's way, way, way below. You know, we can't look at ourselves that, you know, things are possible to us. Right? So, with Christ-like sacrifice, uh, Christ-like sacrifice here I'm talking about here is actually giving ourselves in service for others. Christ-like sacrifice, right? Spending precious time to help people. Denying ourselves and our desires in order to do what is best for someone else. Denying ourselves and our desires in order to do what is best for someone else. Yeah, sometimes it happens like that. You know, you have something to do and then somebody call you. You're supposed maybe to go for dinner or maybe you're supposed to meet somebody else and somebody come, up, come by and speak to you or come, somebody says, you know, it's so important. Then you have to, what are you going to choose? Either you choose to say no, you, you choose yes. Then you have to deny yourself and your own desire to do the things that you have plans for and do what is best for somebody else. So that is having a Christ-like sacrifice. Amen. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, you can read that, all right? It says here, Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 3 to 5, I've just run through very quickly. It says here, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. 
you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. This is in the New Living Translation. The uh, New King James Version, uh, verse 5, Philippians chapter 3, verse 5, it says this, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen? The same mind of Christ. What, the, what is the mindset of Christ? The mindset of Christ is, take an interest in others too. So we must not be considered as the introvert, you know, live in, live in isolation. Introvert live in isolation. We must take interest in others. So this is a Christ-like sacrifice. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's move on. All right. Worthy of imitating. It says here, remember your leaders who taught you the word of God, think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. Hebrew chapter 13 verse 7 says here. Amen. All right, let's have a look at this. You know, when the, the, the leaders who taught uh, the word of God to us, what was the outcome of those who learned? You know, people who taught the word of God to us, what was the outcome? Of those who learn, you know, during the time of Paul, uh, when they learn, the people who learn the word, they did not turn back to the Levitical uh, uh, system. The Levitical system is a system of uh, ceremonial laws, all the laws and all the laws and laws, all the laws, you know. So when, when Paul uh, taught the people the word of God, you know, think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow example of the faith, huh? They have not turned back to the Levitical system, but they, they continue to maintain their confession of their faith right up to the end. Many of the people, you know, they were, they were martyred as well, perhaps for Christ's sake. And uh, their faith, I would say, this kind of faith is a faith that, you know, it is worthy to imitate because they kept the faith. They maintain it right up to the end. All right. They don't like, you know, they learn the word of God and then they go back to a lot of uh, uh, law-based uh, Levitical rules and system and guidelines and ceremonial guidelines and so forth. But uh, the faith that they, they learn through the word of God, they cling on to the, the Christian doctrine. And, uh, and we call this, uh, we are called to a life of faith. Our, our life must be a life of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. In, the, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, this is one that I particularly, I, I, I love this verse. Right. Uh, Paul said this, you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Amen. Because many people are not, many people have not had a close encounter with Jesus Christ. So when they look at Paul, the, the way Paul was running his ministry, the, the fate of Paul, you know, through his sufferings, through his challenges, whatever suffering that he, Paul runs through, uh, it has brought him closer and closer to Christ Jesus. So when we run through challenges, when we run through trials, when we run through tests, uh, we must remember one thing, it will draw us closer and closer to Christ Jesus. It will draw us closer and closer to the Word of God. And Paul, uh, in, in, you know, when he ran through all the challenges and all the situations and all the trials and so forth, uh, he did not say, you know, he, he, he did not say he, he wanted to leave this faith, you know, even certain time when he had advantages as well, you know, he did not misuse his advantages, you know, uh, and the rights that he have, but he, will co he continued to help the people, you know, continue to share the gospel, continue to preach, Continue to do whatever that God wants him to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Whoever, uh, the disciples and the, the Christians who are weak, you know, he will just go and encourage them with the word of God and continue to show them, you know, telling them all the time and through his all his uh, uh, mission trip, all right, uh, his journey, missionary journey, he continued to uh, encourage the people, exhort them, and at the same time, uh, encourage them in all areas, whatever areas that they are in. Amen. So uh, we uh, have to continue to imitate Christ. Amen. 
What he says here, you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. He did not say here, imitate me only. Eh? Imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Whatever that Paul imitates Christ, imitate Paul, you're imitating Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Otherwise, uh, don't follow somebody who don't imitate Christ. Uh, you follow somebody who imitate Christ, uh, it's just like a blind man <laughs> leading another blind man. You fall into the pit and then you look at him, he says, why am I inside this pit? And then the blind man as well, uh, the leader as well, ask him, <laughs> ask him and turn around and ask him, I didn't bring you in here. I thought, I thought you dragged me down. And both of them will be arguing, quarreling, and <laughs> asking each other, how am I going to get out of this pit? Huh? So, I would say that, you know, it's always important. All right. All right. The other one here, it's uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. It says, uh, so let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God as the people of Israel did, we will fall. So continue to, to, to obey God. The Bible speaks as well here that, you know, when we talk about uh, God's rest, uh, do our best to enter that rest. Resting, the other day I shared, rest in his rest of hope, rest of faith. Don't rest uh, with worries and doubts. You rest with worries and doubts. You rest uh, no, with worries and doubts. You rest with... Uh, uh, you know, with uh, anxiety, you know, he says here, be diligent, uh, be diligent in order to enter into rest of faith. Uh, be diligent to make sure that our hope is Christ the Lord. Christ is our hope, nothing else. Uh, uh, diligent to uh, uh, resist any temptation, merely to profess faith in Him. And then uh, next day, uh, next hour, then uh, we renounce uh, him because uh, we have this uh, great persecution when we are in the, the midst of uh, a great trials and suffering. Many people, sometimes they, they leave their faith. The Israelites were such, you know, the Israelites, uh, you know, they left their faith at one time because, you know, when they were in Egypt, you know, they were in bondage. They felt that they were so, even though they were slaves, they felt they were so comfortable. But uh, God have other plans for them, just like God has planned for you and me. Sometimes we are in bondage. Sometimes, we, you know, we want to leave, uh, pull ourselves out from bondage. We find it so difficult. But God's plan is always the best plan. His ways, His thoughts are so high. You cannot comprehend the things that you are able to comprehend on God's plan and God's thoughts. Uh, then uh, is no more mystery. Really. Uh, God's plan sometimes it comes in a direction uh, that you never expect Him to do it, but His direction and His ways are always so 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 high. You know, in the book of uh, 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 Third John chapter one verse one to eleven, it says, "Dear friend, don't let this bad example influence you. Follow only what is good. Remember that those." who do good proof that they are God's children. Amen. Follow what is good, you know. This was a time, uh, just a couple of verses before that. Uh, there's one man by the, by the name of Diatrophes. Uh, you, know. you know, when, uh, when the travelers were traveling to the churches, uh, the churches, the leaders, the people in the church, they were supporting the travelers. But this man says, no, why should we support those uh, uh, travelers, we don't want. We don't want have. We don't want to have anything to do with them. We do not want to support them as well. He refused to have anything to do with them. You know, and uh, he don't even welcome the travelers. In other words, uh, the travelers who are missionaries or teachers, and uh, he even tell others, uh, don't help them. You know, sometimes in in the church also we face people like that. Hey, this person don't help him. Hey, that person don't help the blood. You know, this person is like that, like that. You know, we, we, we tell them, you know, we share and support them. Don't do anything to help him at all, you know. But that's not the way uh, uh, God wants us to do. Uh, the Lord wants us to love everyone as he loves us. Um, so this, uh, uh, the example that these uh, uh, Diotrephes have uh, exemplified, this is something that, it says it's, it's not a, a good example. So don't let a, a bad example influence us. So certain things are worthy to imitate. 
certain things are not worthy to imitate. Um, so uh, just take note of it. And uh, let's have a look. Huh? Um, when you imitate some people, you uh, there are certain areas that you look at it. Uh, I, I listed here, uh, imitate carefully. Huh? Uh, marriage. Uh, marriage. Don't, for, don't go imitate somebody say, this plus, you know, keep having some problem in the marriage relationship. You say, I support you this, I support you this. Yes, 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 you don't go home. Oh, yes, you, you, you run away. <laughs> yes, you stay away. You know, huh? so imitate carefully, you know, who are the people you need to imitate, all right? Parenting as well. Sometimes people, you know, share about their parenting. You know, this, this, uh, this, this child, you know, I'm not happy, you know, I, I I cane, I cane him, I cane her, I slap her, I slap him, you know, I kick, you know. So certain things are not, when you look at certain certain parenting, uh, don't imitate blindly. Uh, certain things are not worth to imitate, all right? So whenever we want to imitate somebody else, look at this pattern. What what kind of pattern we need to imitate? Is this pattern filled with humility or not? Uh, is this pattern is something that, you know, uh, the life that I see in them, uh, I should imitate or not. Or a certain thing that I look into this uh, uh, life that they are going, running through, uh, should I take the initiative to, you know, to pursue and this is the, 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 the way that it should be. Uh, gentle, soft, you know, and uh, discernment with wisdom, uh, consistent, you know, with their, their way of life, you know, they are, they are very uh, considered as very thoughtful. Huh? So look at it, even in the people who are, uh, who, who gives, uh, giving, all right, in the area of giving, you know, is it worthy to imitate or not, you know, or this person say, I want to give, they don't give. Why you give? Huh? Huh? Yes, I have somebody who is very close to, 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 not, I would say close, la, close in one way. Uh, said, hey, why you give to a church? Eh? Why should you give to a church? What? Not necessary one. Huh? Yeah, I mean, there are people who say like that. But so people who say like that is probably they do not know Christ. So you forgive them. Huh? But don't follow people who uh, uh, no, in the areas that, you know, certain areas that you think is not right. So uh, imitate carefully in terms of serving as well, evangelism as well, prayer as well, Bible study as well, uh, spiritual maturity as well. Is that on the, the TV? Can you just go on it? Yeah, let's go on it for all so they can see. Huh? Turn that on, the TV there. Huh? All right, turn that on so they can see. Otherwise, uh, they can't follow that. All right. The TV there, can you turn that on? Is it, is it on? All right. Is it easier to turn that on? All right. Okay. So so let's let's give uh, uh, Celine uh, two, uh, two minutes to just turn that on so that at least the screen is on. Huh? You can see that clearly. Huh? Uh, I, I wonder why uh, every time when we have a class, uh, something just happened to the the, the, the screen. All right. All right. <laughs> so, okay, let's come back to this. Uh, imitate the lives of others. Uh, imitate the lives of others. The Bible says here in the book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verse 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. Uh, it says here, um, I am not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. Paul said this, eh? For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. You, have, you can have many teachers. 10,000 10, teachers is talking about here, alright? So many people will teach you, but you, you only have one spiritual father. And Paul said this, for I became your father in Christ Jesus. He did not say, I become your spiritual father. Many people say, hey, this is my spirit, yeah, spiritual daughter. Uh, yeah, this is my daughter in Christ Jesus. Uh, you don't say, this is my spirit, this, I'm your spiritual father, spiritual father, spiritual. But the Bible says, Paul said, I am your father in Christ Jesus. He didn't say, that I'm your spiritual father. The only, he, he said that you have only one spiritual father. The Bible says that when I preach the good news to you, so I urge you to imitate me. Amen. So imitating the lives of others. All right. So I would say here, imitate the lives of others who, whose lives are in Christ. If their life 
are in Christ, you can imitate them because they are, you can emulate them, the lives of others whose lives are in Christ. And then if you look at this person, if this person embody the principle of their lives, being people of God. In other words, if I look at this person, this person uh, embodies or encumbers or, 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 or have, I would say in simplicity, have the principles of God in their life. They are the people of God. Then you imitate their life, it's okay. Otherwise, you imitate their life when they, are, they don't have principle. Why should you imitate? So that's the reason here. He says here, so I urge you to imitate me. Paul said, you imitate me because I embody the principle of Christ in my life. My life is, I'm living the life that I live. It's the life of Christ that is in me. So when you, have, when you look at the person in this case, you engage it and you apply it into your life. Amen. Apply it. Uh, so when you look at this person in that way, you apply it. Uh. Otherwise, you know, if the person is not embodying the, the principles of their uh, lives of Jesus Christ in their lives, they, uh, they are not walking in, 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 in proper way, their life does not emulate the life of Christ, and, uh, you know, don't engage uh, the, their, their, their lifestyle and put it into you, it doesn't, it doesn't help, because why? Then you'll be running the wrong direction, just like a blind man leading a blind that falls into a pit. All right, so very important here. So it says here, it says here, dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. Some of the people follow the example of, uh, of uh, Paul, you know, you know, some of the people who follow the example of Christ, you know. So when you look at them, you, so you just emulate, like it says, pattern your life uh, after after this kind of lifestyle as well. Then, Hebrews 6, 12, then you will not become spiritually dull, indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. Endurance is so, so, so important. When I look at uh, the life of Paul, uh, you know, Paul actually, the way he lives, the way he runs through challenges, He's actually the recipient of God's mercy. God's mercy, God's compassion, God's love. And when you look at his life as well, that you know, when when you know when Paul received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's it's like you know, it's from a conversion, and then he received Christ, and then he just walked closer and closer towards the cross. Everything you look at it is is Christ, but nothing but Christ. Christ, but nothing but Christ. What Christ have did for him, what Christ have did for Paul, he can also do for you and me. He can also do for others. Amen? Yes. Right? Yes. He will continue to do for us. So when we look at our life here, you know, Hebrews uh, 6.12 it says here, yeah, it says here as well, uh, in the other version it says, you know, they should not become sluggish. Uh, you know, a spiritually dull here means our life must, must not be slug sluggish, you know, allowing their feet to be, to drag and their spirits to lack. Press on, he says here, press on, press on imitating all true believers who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Press on. Don't let our spiritual life be so dull, you know. I, I really, you know, every time I look at it, uh, our life must be filled with great power, actually. No, no, great power is not, not the early power. Early power, pointless. Our great power here must be a power that, you know, people, you know, like, like when, when Jesus was in the temple, uh, he had uh, uh, God's favor, man's favor, uh, God's wisdom. Not man's wisdom, uh, God's wisdom. Uh, and his stature grew. Uh, so this is something that, you know, when we look at it, we must have this kind of favor in our life. Like, you know, our favor must be, and the power of the Holy Spirit must be so strong uh, that many things in our life will just turn around because it is the spiritual things, the spiritual realm that actually uh, overwhelms the natural realm. 
Natural realm comes about because it is through the spiritual realm. Otherwise, God says, let there be light. Then there is light. In the natural realm, there was no light. But when he spoke the word, there was light. See, everything is actually through a spoken word. So whatever you are running through, whatever situation it is, yeah, you always remember, don't never, never, never speak a word uh, that is of negative, uh, what do you call that, a negative uh, 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 profession and, uh, uh, or confession. Never, never speak a word that goes against your prayer. If your prayer is this, 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 don't ever say that it will not happen. Don't ever say that, you know, that it will never come to pass. Every prayer we make, uh, always remember that uh, it must become history. When I say it becomes history, it means uh, past redeemer. Otherwise, how to be history? It will be future. <laughs> right? Uh, so, the other one here is, okay, let's we have another two or three more slides. All right. Um, one group imitates another. Uh, when you look at a group, uh, you look at a fellowship group, you look at uh, some of the church who are, uh, some of the churches that are actually, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, running through with uh, uh, godly family ethics, you know, learn from some of the people, learn from other fellowships, learn from other ministry, learn from, you know, learn from other church, you know. But when we learn, it doesn't mean that uh, we need to apply everything spot on because every church, uh, every family, they have different patterns. They have different patterns. Uh. But what I'm saying here, we take the godly principle and what they are doing and what are, what are, what are things that are correct and you think that these things are applicable in your family, in your home, in your church, in your fellowship, in your life, receive them and then apply it. Certain things that are not required, you just put it away. That's all. So uh, imitate things that are, are considered as uh, proper. Huh? Proper. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's move on. Huh? Let's move on here. All right. Um, two more. All right. Uh, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do. Imitate God. Because you are His dear children. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Just as Christ suffered for you, He is your example. You must follow in His step. Difficult. Huh? <laughs> Difficult. Huh? He says here, God called you to do good, even if it means suffering. Just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in His steps. Sometimes we think it's difficult. But obedient, silent suffering sometimes. Eh? But yet, God calls us to do good. Eh? Doesn't mean that because you are suffering, eh, you need to go and better somebody. You have to beat up somebody. You have to scold somebody. You have to release. But sometimes when we look at it, when we, you know, you know, during those days, those days when I was not born again, and you know, certain times, we begin to reflect. You know. We cannot take somebody's, uh, uh, what to call that, uh, somebody's uh, 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 situations that are considered as uh, some argument that was running through somewhere, you know, some uh, uh, situations that are uh, happening somewhere, and uh, because of, of those chaotic situations, and errors and, and some quarrels, and so forth. And then when you are out of that place, uh, you throw it out on somebody else because of your suffering there. So, and then you throw it out. You, you get angry because with somebody else, but it's, even this person got nothing to do with you. Uh, then people ask, Chome, why you why you become so angry with me? Why? Because of your anger from somewhere. You take it along. You carry it along in your boot, in your car. Then when you arrive in the place, you open your boot, you open your car doors, you throw everything out. So it's it's, you know, the Bible teaches us uh, continue to do God good uh, even if it means suffering. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, it's, this is uh, God's uh, imitating the ethic of God. It's, it's difficult at times, but ask the Holy Spirit to help us. All right. So I'm going to close with this uh, last uh, slide. Uh, last slide here. 
ultimately imitating the ethic of God. He who says he abides in me ought himself also to walk just as he walked. New King James Version. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. I, I specifically like uh, this uh, New King James Version here. If you say you abide in God, it says say you walk as God walks. The thing that God does, you continue to do. But if you, if you do the thing that God does, if he does not do the thing that God does, and then uh, you know, you're not walking in the way that God is asking you to walk. Huh? So sometimes, you know, I shared some time ago, I said, you know, this guy was walking, he was walking, and then he, saw, he says, hey, Jesus walking with me. So every time when he walk, huh, you look behind, there are four footprints, four footprints. Huh? I was very happy. Four footprints, Jesus walking with me. Four footprints. Yeah. After walking for some distance, quietly walking, 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 he was talking. Then he looked, looked beside, eh? Jesus not there. Then he looked behind, two footprints only. Then he was very sad. She was very upset. He says, Jesus had went and gone away. He don't know where he left. He had left me, abandoned me. Huh? Then he was murmuring, grumbling, and talking, you know, talking so much about, you know, how can it be? You know, God had left me. He was so upset. As he was walking, walking, he was talking, murmuring. Then a voice came and spoke to him. The footprint you saw behind is not your footprint. Yeah? It's Jesus' footprint. He was shocked. How can it be? Then Jesus said, I'm the one who's carrying you. <laughs> it's not your footprint. When you were in trouble, when you were running through challenges, when you were running through all those situations, you thought that nobody is helping you and, you know, and God has forsaken you. He says, no. All the while, I have been carrying you. That's why the Bible says, uh, Matthew 11, 28, it says, what? Cast your burden unto me. All those who are weary, cast your burden unto me. Take my yoke, which is light and easy. So when we imitate, we are not seeking to become like others. When we imitate, huh? you, when you imitate somebody's life, some family lives, you know, some people's life, you know, or in, in the case of Paul, imitate me as I imitate Christ. You are not imitating uh, and seeking to become like them but like Jesus. Amen? Yes. When we imitate, we seek to embody not the lives of others, but the values of the Father. <clears throat> Amen? So this means that we only ultimately imitate Christ only. Amen? Yes. Whatever it is, we imitate Jesus Christ only. So even if when you imitate somebody, you are not seeking to become like them, but you are seeking to become more and more like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you all honor. We give you all glory, Lord. Father, we know that we can do nothing without you. We just can't do anything. There is nothing within us that we can do by ourselves. Everything, O oh God, we need you to help us. Every direction, every decision, every thoughts, O oh Lord, our breath comes from you daily, O oh Lord. Father, I thank you for today. Lord, I pray, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, continue, you will continue to bless your children, guide them, teach them, help them, O oh Father, in every area of their life. Father, we thank you and we praise your holy name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. See you again next week.